We're tracking breaking news this afternoon as part of Interstate 64 is shut down in Lexington. We have the latest updates for you just ahead on WKYT at noon. A man accused of killing three people inside a Danville pawn shop was back in court this morning. His attorneys asking for another hearing. Those temperatures really rising very rapidly the rest of the afternoon and off towards your day tomorrow. Possible record breaking days. Then the rain comes on in. I'll show you the timing on that coming up. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good afternoon, Bill Bryant and Barbara Bailey for WKYT News. A major traffic backup this midday near Lexington. Eastbound Interstate 64 is closed near the northern split after a crash. It happened just about an hour ago near the 73 mile marker. A box truck overturned, blocking both lanes. If you're headed to Lexington on eastbound 64, you will be running into delays. WKYT's Lauren Miner is live at the scene now. Uh, Lauren, what can you tell us uh, is going on there? Hey, good afternoon, Bill. What I can tell you right now is that fire is working on cleaning up a fuel spill. Now, as you can see right now, they are working on getting the truck pulled up. They have the crane out, so they are in the process of getting the truck and the fuel cleaned up right now. Now, the crash happened on 64 East, just before the 75 North exit. They do still have 64 East shut down, and I'll tell you, traffic is backed up for miles. They do have Petco um, on the scene as well, getting the spill cleaned up. I did speak with police who told me that there were three vehicles involved. And this is what they said happened. They said that the driver of the Penske box truck was driving on 64 East. Another semi may have cut in front of him, causing him to swerve, hitting another semi. And then that is when the Penske truck flipped on its side and started leaking fuel. I did speak with Fire who said they are not sure on when the fuel will get cleaned up. It will be a fairly extensive cleanup. Uh, our concern is getting the roadway cleared of all the oil so that we don't leave a slick surface behind for all the other travelers on the interstate. As you can see, still lots of people on scene right now working on getting this cleaned up. I was sitting in the traffic, uh, I would say it was about an hour and a half ago is when I noticed the accident and it was backed up for miles, but they are working on it. It looks like they're done mainly cleaning up the spill and right now they're just working on getting that truck flipped over and on to the back of another truck so that way they can pull it away and get traffic moving. Right now we will continue to be on scene this morning and keep you up to date on 164 East. We'll open back up. So make sure you stay with us here on WKYT and also follow us on social media so we can keep you updated. For now, reporting live in Lexington, Lauren Miner, WKYT. Lauren, thank you. We'll also note that IA 64 westbound is down to one lane. So quite an issue uh, in that area this afternoon. We'll keep you informed on air and online. As our news continues, news out of Franklin County here at noon. The sheriff there tells us that a woman arrested after a standoff in Lexington is connected to a robbery in Franklin County. Now they say Robin Holbert robbed a gas station on Evergreen Road just a couple of days before the standoff with Lexington Police. WKYT Sean Moody is live in Frankfurt now with our other top story at noon. Sean? Good afternoon, Barb and Bill. This is a follow-up to that gas station robbery that happened last Sunday night here in Frankfurt. It's the one where investigators weren't sure if it was a woman or a man trying to make himself look like a woman. Now they say they believe it's a woman. In fact, they believe it's the same woman who was in a standoff with Lexington police last Tuesday night. This is the surveillance video from the robbery at a gas station on Evergreen Road last Sunday night. Investigators weren't sure if that person was a woman or a man in women's clothes. They also said that person was covered in some kind of a white substance, maybe paint or powder. That robber got away with cash from the register. Now Franklin County Sheriff Pat Melton says that was Robin Holbert, the same woman who police in Lexington said was in a standoff with them for hours last Tuesday night. In that case, police said they stopped her car because it had been reported stolen. They said she got out of that car and tried to run. They said that she had a gun, and that's what triggered the standoff situation that eventually ended peacefully after several hours. The robbery case from Frankfort is being presented to a Franklin County grand jury today. Now, Holbert is still listed at the Fayette County Detention Center. Police in Lexington said after the standoff that they would charge her with wanton endangerment and fleeing or evading police. Live in Frankfort, Sean Moody, WKYT. Sean, thank you. And police said Holbert also had other misdemeanor warrants out at the time of the standoff. 
The man accused in a high profile triple murder case was back in court today. Police say Kenneth Keith killed three people inside the Danville pawn shop back in September of 2013. And now his lawyers want some of the evidence in that case to be thrown out. WKYT's Phil Pendleton was in court this morning. He has the latest on the case now. Phil? It has been more than three years since three people were shot to death inside a Danville pawn shop, and we still don't know when this trial will begin. Now the defense, the attorneys for Kenneth Keith, want a hearing to see if some of the evidence in the case will be suppressed. That hearing was set for December the 15th at 1.30. The prosecutor says it has to do with some searches of property that took place while the investigation was going on. Keith is accused of killing Michael and Angela Hockensmith and gold broker Daniel Smith in the ABC Gold Games and more in September of 2013. Keith was arrested several weeks later. Prosecutors say they are ready for the case to go to trial. From a standpoint of forensic evidence, case preparation, uh, we're ready for the case to be set for trial. The prosecutor says that based on the current developments and how they are ready to proceed, he believes the case could go to trial sometime next spring. In Boyle County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Phil, thank you. And recently, a judge ruled that the case will stay in Boyle County after he rejected a motion from the defense for a change of venue. Well, a man is now facing several charges after a cocaine bust in Scott County. Georgetown police said they arrested John Tucker after reports of a suspicious man trying to pry open a hotel window. After they arrested him, police say they found 40 grams of cocaine. WKYT's Mike Byer talked with the police and has details now. John Tucker of Hazard faces several charges after Georgetown police find that he was carrying a large amount of drugs and money. Tucker is charged with public intoxication, trafficking a controlled substance, and possession of a controlled substance. These charges come after police received a suspicious activity call around midnight from the Deluxe Inn in Georgetown. Witnesses tell police they spotted Tucker trying to pry open a window to the hotel with a knife. When police arrived, they located Tucker. Police say he told them that he was a guest at the hotel and the room he was trying to get into was being rented by a person he knew. Police say his story didn't add up as the room was empty. Upon further investigation, police discovered that Tucker was carrying 40 grams of cocaine and over $2,000. That's a significant amount of cocaine, 40, you know, 40 grams like that's a, a large amount. That's a large amount of currency, and uh, you know, we don't tolerate any of that in Georgetown. We're facing the same problems that other communities are facing. We're uh, trying to combat the drug problem, the addiction problem, and this is just another step towards that. Now, Tucker is currently being held at the Scott County Detention Center. In Georgetown, Mike Byer, WKYT. Now, a court case has yet to be scheduled. Well, it is November 1st. You have to remind yourself of that because it sure doesn't feel like it. I know. It. I was going to say prove it. <laughs> right. November 1st. We could see record highs today as temperatures climb into the 80s. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is out in our first alert weather center with an early look at the forecast. Micah. Yeah, we're getting that mixture of sun and clouds outside at this moment. Just some milky clouds. Don't expect any rain out of that. But what it's doing here is it's kind of limiting us from rising extremely rapidly. But we are rising pretty quickly, though. We're sitting right there around that 80 degree reading. I do believe here in Lexington will be 82, 83 degrees, which could possibly break a record. And that's what we're going to be focusing in on. So some will be in the upper 70s, some there in the low to mid 80s, kind of depending on where you live and how much sunshine you actually get. Gusty winds, too, tracking those records and looking at these late week changes. There are big changes too. Thursday off into Friday. I'm going to show you what you can expect coming up. Okay. Donald Trump appears to be riding a wave of momentum following the FBI's announcement that it's reopening the investigation into Hillary Clinton's cl handling of classified material. The latest ABC News Washington Post poll out today has Trump with a one point lead nationally. Clinton says she has nothing to hide and says the FBI should be more forthcoming in all of this. Craig Boswell is at the White House with more details. Hillary Clinton says the FBI won't find anything wrong in a batch of newly discovered emails. If they want to look at some more emails of one of my staffers, by all means, go ahead, look at them. The Bureau is pouring over thousands of emails it discovered on a laptop Clinton's aide, Huma Abedin, shared with her estranged husband, Anthony Weiner. Do you think right now that Hillary Clinton is happy with the services of Uma? I don't think so. 
The Clinton campaign accuses James Comey of having a double standard for its revelation into Clinton's emails while refusing to confirm the Bureau is investigating potential links between Donald Trump's campaign personnel and Russia. He won't say what he's doing with Donald Trump, but what we're hearing from anonymous leaks is that they're investigating Donald Trump's ex-campaign manager over his connections to the Russians. The New York Times reports the FBI did look into possible Trump ties to Russia and found no conclusive or direct link. Donald Trump is focusing on his other favorite topic today, Obamacare. Trump's trying to tie Clinton to the president's health care plan, which announced premiums are going up an average of 25 percent this year. Hillary Clinton wants to double down on Obamacare, making it even more expensive. Tuesday, Clinton will try to shift the attention back to Trump when she campaigns with Alicia Machado, the beauty pageant winner Trump once criticized because she gained weight. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. Ann Clinton has used Trump's comments about women to gain double-digit leads with the demographic in nearly every poll out there right now. Well, if you need an absentee ballot for this election, today is the last day to get one here in Kentucky. Keep that in mind. In the Commonwealth, you have to have a reason for not being able to make it to the polls on Election Day in order to get an absentee ballot. To apply for one, you go to your county clerk's office or you can request one online. And completed ballots must be mailed back back in and get to the county clerk by 6 p.m. on election day, again a week from today. And to keep up with all the latest campaign news as we near election day, go to WKYT.com or download the WKYT News app and you'll get updates on your phone. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray and the owners of Bell's Cocktail House are celebrating the opening of the city's only rooftop bar. This area is big enough for 100 people. Bar management believes this project will bring new energy into the downtown nightlife. The cocktail house has been open for three years, and owners say building a rooftop bar is something they've had in the works since day one. From the very start, we wanted to do this, and now we kind of have the collateral and the bandwidth to capture our dreams of doing something unique for downtown Lexington. A Bell's Cocktail House will open up its rooftop to guests starting Friday. All right, they're ready to go. Well, six people are dead after a school bus and a commuter bus crashed this morning in Baltimore. What we know about that, coming up on WKYT News at Noon, Kentucky's number one midday news. Six people are dead after a school bus and commuter bus crashed this morning in southwest Baltimore. This helicopter footage we're showing you now shows the head-on collision. Police say it happened just before the morning rush hour in the western area of the city. No children were on board the school bus when it crashed. Police say the school bus slammed into a car, then continued to where it hit a pillar before heading into oncoming traffic where it hit the commuter bus. There's no word on what caused the school bus driver to crash. Police say 10 people in all were injured. At least one person is dead and several others are injured in eastern Alabama where crews continue to battle a gas fire that has sparked wildfires and evacuations. The fire started after a colonial gas pipeline exploded. The blast site is not far from the line which ruptured back in September leading to fuel shortages and gas price spikes in several southern states. Having the second line shut down could have a ripple effect further into the northeast. Expect higher prices and fewer choices if you're planning to shop for health insurance on the exchange during the open enrollment period. Open enrollment for 2017 begins today. It's the first time Kentuckians will be using the federal website, healthcare.gov, instead of Connect, which was operated by the state. Former Governor Steve Bashir started Connect. It was discontinued shortly after Governor Matt Bevan took office. Much more news coming up on WKYT News at Noon. A woman who's accused in a standoff with Lexington police is now being accused in an armed robbery in Franklin County. We'll have more on that coming up. Now, your zone-by-zone zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris.
We have those milky clouds out in advance, but it's a mixture of sun and clouds. Not all that bad, and don't expect any rain out of those. As we track off into the afternoon, it's absolutely nothing about the rain. It's more about, or how dry we are, rather, it's more about these temperatures. I mean, we're going to be right there in the upper 70s, lower 80s. Some of us will reach that 83, 84 degree reading, so we could potentially actually hit a record here in Lexington at 83 degrees once it's all said and done. We'll see. 75 there by the evening hours. This is patio type of weather. This is this type of weather if you're heading out to the ball fields later on this evening. It's really, really nice overnight and into tomorrow. Pretty much the same story. 1 p.m. today, 76. 1 p.m. tomorrow, 76 degrees. So we're pretty much carbon copies of each other, and we may hit a record tomorrow, too. Then we look towards your Thursday. That's when we start to see some rain move on in. Showers and thunderstorms are expected to be very scattered out and about. This isn't so much a line moving through, but it will give us at least the opportunity at some hit and miss rain in the forecast. So once that pushes through on Thursday, timing on it right now. Remember, it's subject to change once we get a little bit closer, but the timing right now looks to be late morning, early afternoon, and then slowly fade away as we go through your day. So evening hours for central northern zones as of right now actually look dry. Much cooler. Air. I mean, much cooler air sliding in place as we sit there with temperatures there in the 50s on Friday. It's going to be pretty chilly there for Friday night football. And as we head off towards your weekend, it gets better. We'll be right there in the 60s and actually look for a mixture of sun and clouds. So today and tomorrow is more about the record breaking potential. And then Thursday, we bring in the rain chances. Friday, much, much cooler. And then the weekend actually looks pretty good. So we'll stay with that mixture of sun and clouds. And that's right there around average at least. This is nowhere near average, well above average, but at least we'll get back toward average there for the weekend. Looking, feeling much nice, and trying to turn those clocks back one hour. That'd be nice, right? Saturday into Sunday morning. Guys? All right, thank you very much, and keep it here on WKYT News. When we come back, one of the SEC's most dynamic players is on the move. And are the football cats making that long awaited move in the SEC? Dave Baker has sports next. Checking stocks as we head into afternoon trading. The major market indicators are down. Besides Alabama and Auburn, who's the hottest team in the SEC? Easy to make the case that it's Kentucky. Cats have won five of the last six. They're four and two in the league, and they have big conference games left with Georgia and Tennessee. Mark Stoops said he can tell his players are not satisfied. Because I know they're not. I know that's not lip service. I know they want to get out there and prepare. I could tell by the way we are practicing, and that makes life more fun when you could go on the practice field and really enjoy what you're doing and you could really um, you know give them the constructive criticism that they need and they take it and move on then uh, you know that's always a good sign cats host georgia on saturday the bulldogs two and four in league play they're coming off a loss to florida if kentucky were to win this game bill brian it would be the first time since 1993 that the cats have finished ahead of the dogs in the sec standings it'll be saturday night 7 30 on the sec network tennessee running back jalen hurd one of the most dynamic in the league in all college football leaving the vols program butch jones confirmed the reports yesterday that hurd will leave the program adding that he believes team chemistry could improve in the running backs absence yikes how about that for a shot on the way out the door Heard the ball's leading rusher, 451 yards, three TDs. He was ranked as one of the program's all-time leading rushers across his three-year career. Former Danville football coach Sam Harp is returning to the Bluegrass State as an assistant coach at Anderson County. 62-year-old Harp recently announced his resignation from Lebanon High School in Tennessee, effective at the end of the season. Harp was head coach at Anderson County from 1985, from 1985 to 87, before taking Danville to 10 state title games. He won seven of those. And the field is set for Saturday's Breeders' Cup Classic California Chrome. You see they're out of the four hole undefeated this year. The even money favorite Arrogate, the second choice trained by Bob Baffert is on the extreme outside in the field of 10 for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel, you will get you set for the cats and the dogs. Talk a little hoops as well. That's all coming your way. Six o'clock on 630 WLAP. We've got a lot more coming up throughout the day. We'll see you back here at 630 on the WKYT News at 630 on the CW Lexington. But for now, guys, that's a look at sports on this Tuesday. All right, Buzz. Thank you so much. And there's more to come in our next half hour of WKYT News at noon. Franklin County deputies say a suspect in one of the robberies there was arrested after a standoff here in Lexington. More on the woman accused just ahead.
Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $40 million. And tomorrow night's Powerball jackpot is $198 million.